I wanted to share a video where I start with a lot of starts, what I call them, where I put a lot of black marks down on the paper. And then I go into each one and just add additional marks. These are great because they're 11 by 15. It's a very nice watercolor paper. I could flatten these out, uh, you know, really flat by just putting a flat surface and some books on them, but I'm still working on them. And um, they're really nice because they can be matted. I can also see this in a mat that is even thicker where, um, you know, you have a great big painting with this in the center. But what I wanted to show you to finish these off is the different marks that I put on each of the paintings. And I wanted to show you separately because these individual marks that are on these paintings are the ones that are unique to you. Hello, my name is Cheryl Wilson, and if you're returning to my channel, thank you so much for coming back and and being one of my subscribers and supporting me, um, just being out there with me. And if you're new, I wanted to share this new video with you where I start with what they call starts, and I just use different markers to make marks on the paper. I don't think about it. I just freely make marks. And this particular video is basically doing it with like the uh, golden carbon black high flow and some acrylic inks and black markers. I start basically with uh, lighter markers like pencil and charcoal and move into uh, my woody which is darker and then to the actual acrylic paint and acrylic inks. And I just make marks. I make some of my favorite marks. And it's basically called activating the paper. I don't have a problem with the blank canvas or a blank piece of paper, but a lot of times to make, uh, to inspire yourself to make future marks, it's, um, this is a way to just get started on the paper. And so um, you'll see me just, just making marks on the paper. I use both my right and left hand. A lot of times with my left hand, I'm looser and freer. And so I do like to use my left hand a lot. Some of the uh, marks or some of the pages are off, um, off the screen. But that's okay because I wanted to get close enough so you could see what I was doing, but um, not so far away that you couldn't enjoy some of the ones. So they're all basically the same at this point. The first was a pencil. That is a piece of graphite that I'm using. Some are water soluble, some are not. And at this point, I don't care. A lot of times I do like um, ones that will blend with the water and make a gray mark. I like that. But I'm just making marks on the paper at this particular point with different utensils just to get some marks down, just to have fun. I am now grabbing uh, a woody, which is darker. It's one of my favorite tools I have in my group. Some of these I'll make more marks than others. It doesn't matter. It's just, um, I am just in the play mode and making my favorite marks and scribbling and just getting something down on the paper. That's about all that I'm doing. And the reason why is it's just a way to start for me a free flow of moving uh, the product on the paper. 
Uh, many times I don't start like this. Um, majority of the time I will start with some marks, but I don't start with this many. But this particular exercise, I just wanted to start with a lot. And I do notice that I have a camera on the same table. I'm going to have to figure out. Uh, I am a small YouTube channel, so I don't have a lot of expensive equipment. So I do know my camera is shaking. It's on the same table as my art. So I'm going to have to figure something out. But for for now, it's it's what I have. And um, until I, um, you know, have maybe someone help me photograph or I have a little bit more money to invest in better equipment, it's what I have. That mark is basically just splat in the paper. And any mark that I'm making now is just additional marks that um, help me have fun and be spontaneous. And I'm holding the brush a little further away. I'm dipping it either in an acrylic ink or the uh, Carbon Black High Flow by Golden. And I love black and white. I love, I do that a lot. That's acrylic ink. And um, in fact, I think that may be my high flow because the high flow comes in a jar uh, or a, you know, a, a, you know, container that has a nozzle on it. So to be able to use that fan brush, which I love making marks with that fan brush, I will put it in a, I, it's like a jelly jar that has a wide mouth that I can dip my brush down in it. So um, I love that jar and I will go through a, a lot of that because it's easy to access. So either I will dump the paint out beside me on a palette or I will just put it in that um, jar. So now I'm just again, just um, filling up the paper basically with black marks. And these are all just ways to start, just to get my um, myself flowing. And sometimes when I've been on vacation, or I really don't feel like painting, I will come in and just do a bunch of these just to get myself going and um, in the mood of not being as um, stiff in my painting. So um, that's, uh, this is a fun way to do it. That is what I call, or it's a sash brush. Now that sash brush is round and you can get that in many sizes. You can get that in, um, that's actually, that's a smaller size. It's a larger brush than most brushes, but that for a sash brush is small, all the way up to maybe three, four inches thick, which I have used on larger uh, paintings before. So this is a lot of fun using the sash brush because it's, um, it's just a very thick brush that just allows a lot of freedom when you're applying the paint. So I'm going to be quiet for a while and just let you watch me make marks and um, in, enjoy myself here uh, making the uh, marks on the paper with um, different utensils.
All right, so my sheets have dried and I just put them in a pile here. I love just looking at them like this, kind of they're inspiring, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it to the next step. And um, since these have a very heavy black presence, they're not gonna be the normal painting that I normally do. But I wanted to follow through on these to show you how you can take these heavy black starts and um, how they can give you some inspiration. So I'm grabbing a limited palette where I'm using acrylic ink, which is that little bottle, it's FX, and it's a very transparent. Then I'm using a high flow, like an Indian yellow, and then there's a Lucas, and then a golden white. I'll grab some other colors, but um, in this particular one, I'm, I'm just gonna be doing some different techniques each one, I do not have it planned. I'm just grabbing what I have in front of me um, in the studio to make marks. That FX in the, uh, acrylic um, ink is a very transparent and it looks beautiful. I'm using a type of um, um, spatula that is kind of hard on the end. It's a catalyst type thing, which um, spreads the paint. Now I'm using a palette knife, which is a thinner, which gives it a little bit different uh, spread. And um, that is the acrylic ink, uh, acrylic uh, high flow. Almost the same consistency. The inks are very watery and the high flow is a little thicker. Now I'm throwing in just a golden white and I love white and black together. You'll see me always use white, always use black and just about every uh, painting that I do as an artist. That white is um, pretty um, opaque. It does have some transparency. There are different whites out there. There's like a zinc white which is more transparent and a mixing white. When I grab it out of the tub, the, it's, it's much thicker, especially when I use that catalyst or I use that tool to uh, apply it. And I'm just going through and bringing down some of the paint. Some is gonna cover up some of the black. Some I'm putting on thinner to let some of the black show through. I have no plan. I am just uh, playing with this just to, to enjoy the um, uh, whatever outcome I come up with. That's like a grouter tool that I use a lot in my paintings. It's a, a signature tool of mine. It's, it's on my list of what do I love and that tool with the teeth on it is definitely one of the tools that I love. This is 11 by 15 inch paper. And I wanted to actually throw in what this would look like framed for you. And these you can use as just um, papers to look at and kind of give you inspiration ideas to help you with marks that you find that you like to record. You can use them as studies for a larger painting or you can even frame these. I've sold many of these. So... Um, they have multiple purposes, but they're good for practice and good for, I love doing these if I don't want to do a larger painting. I really. All right, we are at the second painting, and you'll see on this one, I did a lot of turquoise, blues, grays, 
and in the end I did a lot of mark making on the top. There is a, um, a philosophy that I have as an artist. It's, it's not unique to me and it's not new by me, but um, it's a philosophy that I use in my art and that is there's that line between the creation and the inspirating inspiration and creation stage that um, turns into the ugly stage. And then the next step after the ugly stage is when you start adding your own marks into the painting and that's when you know that you have created your painting. And I hope that makes sense because I think every artist has, has gone through a stage where they get to an ugly painting or the ugly part of the painting and sometimes they don't know what to do next. And um, it's the same philosophy when, when people say, how do you know when your painting's done? For me, it's when I add my marks, when I add the marks that I love. And this has taken me a while to get to that point to know what marks it is that I love personally as an artist and what makes my paintings mine. But that's what takes my creation into the ugly stage into the finished painting is when I've added my marks and that's how I know my paintings are done. Now this particular painting was a good example of pretty much covering up all the black marks in here. I didn't start out for it to be that way, but that's the way it ended. I just kept adding the blues, which mixed with some of the grays, and I added some lime greens. And um, it ended up all but maybe that black circle up there, you can see it. But you do see some of the black marks peek through when I make some of the marks with the tools and the scrapes, but pretty much all of the black marks in this painting were the underpainting and the catalyst to make the next mark, but do not show in the final painting. So I'm going to let you um, watch this for a while and watch me create. And then I will pop up what the final painting looks like and what I titled it. So you can see the in creation, which I think is always fun to know where I started and where I ended up.
painting just seemed to take a lot of different turns and you will see a lot of the underpainting black here left in the finished painting and I will show it later but this painting just took a lot of turns and I loved it because um, I kept a lot of the black and white and I did add a lot of additional marks to make it somewhat chaotic but I have other areas that are larger areas where your eye can rest but I just had a lot of fun in this painting I added um, some marks I added some marks with the like bubble wrap I added some drips lots of scribbles and I even added some mixed media tissue but I ended up covering it up, but it added some texture, so I, I actually left it. So you'll see it, this go through some renditions, and in the very end, I added a couple red spots because it just called for something kind of dynamic. So um, as you watch through this, you'll see it go take a lot of take a lot of different turns. And I used a lot of techniques. I even one time took a paper towel and smushed it down to get some texture. And there is some white paint that's a little bit thicker. So you'll see it just take a lot of different turns. And um, I had a lot of fun with this one. So I hope that um, you enjoy watching uh, this particular painting. And um, you'll see further down uh, the end result. Uh, in a frame. I wanted to pop in here. One of the tools I, I love to use is uh, branches from outside. And this is a branch because you cannot get the mark from any other tool that you have. It's very unique. And so I dip it in the high flow and I use it just to scribble black acrylic onto the, the painting. And I have about five or six sticks i have a piece of driftwood i got at the beach um and here's where i add the bubble wrap so the stick um if you grab sticks and twigs from your garden or uh, you know, from a walk you'll find that it's a lot of fun to add the marks from a stick onto your art
You'll see me here just looking to see what this would look like with a mat around it. And I'll do that. It's a used mat that I grab many times just to kind of get an idea of what it would look like. Kind of gives you a different look as to um, where you're going in your art. So you'll see I've popped up the finished painting, what it would look like, matted in in a frame. And again, I apologize. I have my camera on my table until I um, come up with a different solution and can afford a better camera. Um, it's, um, it's I'm, I'm going to try not to jiggle. But you'll see that um, where I add the red blotches in or spots in later down the road and then you'll see again some of my marks like the white circle some of my marks that I typically make so I'm really enjoying what it would look like here in a frame and it just gives me an idea so I'm going to continue to paint and um, add some white on top of this just to kind of give it a, um, a contrast
Okay, so this one I think is like the fourth one. And one of the things you'll see, well, actually you won't see to the end, is when I'm done with this one, I added a bronze marker, which made a big difference on this one. And that's what I mean by adding your own marks. What I'm using there is a, what you call a rigger brush. It's got a very long brush on the end, thin brush. And it's you, if you hold it from the end and you just kind of move it around your painting, it's very, makes uncontrollable marks, which I, I absolutely love. So again, this is a black and white. I love black and white. And then at the end, um, you'll see when I pop up the picture, I added bronze marks. And I don't, I don't show that in the video because a lot of the marks that you'll add in the end are going to be your unique marks. And that's something that you just practice. And so my unique marks are going to be totally different than your unique marks. So um, I encourage you just, just to go for it and have your sheet of paper of marks you love and tools you love. And then at the very end, when you're done with your painting and you want to just do the very last touches, that's when you do those extra marks. So you'll see when I pop up the painting in a frame and I call this I Love Hamburgers for some reason, I don't know, maybe the circles and maybe I was hungry at this point when I named it, but at the end point where um, I have it in the frame, showing it in the frame matted, you'll see the um, the marks, the, the the bronze marks that I brought in on this one. One thing to note is, um, yeah, see, I turned it upside down. That sometimes when I paint, I turn the painting upside down to give it a different look. So the final painting where I ended up signing it was in this format. So I just wanted to make a note of that because I had been painting it the other way so far. Okay, so this is like my fifth one. And um, this one, I again add some of the bronze marker in the end. And I add a piece of tissue paper striped in this one. And then, of course, some of my marks that I'll talk about in the end. But um, this was just another black and white. I kind of got into the black and white and the contrast between the two. And uh, I titled this In the Waiting Room, because I actually went to the doctors um, in the middle of making all these paintings. And uh, the black and white piece of mixed media I put in there reminded me of something they had on the wall. So I don't know, sometimes when I label my paintings or title my paintings, um, they come from uh, experience I've had that remind me of my painting. So uh, here's the painting, the finished painting with the marks of the um, the mixed media piece that was, was kind of funny. It reminded me of the painting itself.
All right, now this is the sixth one. And this had the least amount of black marks on it for my start. So um, I'm adding, I guess, some more black mark here. And then on this one, you'll see, that's a Prussian blue. You'll see me add a real thick white in there that um, I really love a thick paint. So this, in the end, you'll see the, the pop-up here um, has a lot of the marks, has some scrofito with the white gel pen. So um, there's also some of the um, bronze marker. And uh, there it is. And I call this naturally brown hair. But uh, this was a fun piece. And you'll see me shortly just add... Uh, big swash of the white paint and um, the mark through it. And it's still, it's hard to tell, but the texture of that additional white thick paint is really raised on the painting, which really gives it an interesting look. Now this is the last one and I decided to go with some more turquoise again. I really was loving that color. So I used the turquoise, some Prussian blue and the titanium white. And I, in the end, incorporate, um, as you see in the actual painting, some of the gel pen and some marks and um, graphite. But I really like this one. It, it's got kind of a really beautiful flow to it. So I'll let you watch as this is created.
So you can see that I do scraffito, which is scribbling. I do a lot of line work. I do marks with um, different markers. I love the sphere look, so I do a lot of circles. I have some squares here. Again, a lot of scribbly marks. This one had um, a lot of coverage of a color on here, so I did a lot with the white gel pen. I did some with a copper marker. This is one where I added a lot. I added some um, kind of square um, circles with the white gel pen. I added some marks that are unique to me. I do a lot of writing backwards in my art. It's something I love to do. I do a lot of circular marks. So these marks are not ones that are going to be necessarily the marks I make are going to be the ones that you like to do. They're going to be ones that, I mean, that I like to do. They're going to be ones that are unique to you. So I have some of these small studies, and I thought I would just grab a couple of them and make some marks on them that are unique to me that will help you take your next step in your marks. I'm using marks such as a gel pen, um, a graphite, um, a, another uh, type of a thick graphite, a pencil, markers, just a few that I have here, you know, in front of me to kind of just show you some of the marks that I make. And what I would do is um, I scribbled some down here, but I would make a list um, that you put on your board that you keep that are ones that are unique to you. Because again, the marks that I make, I mean, I love the circular mark, but that may not be necessarily a mark that you are going to make on a continual basis. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if I can get the camera down a little bit closer to the, um, um, at some point I will. So I hope that this is not uh, blurry, but some of the marks I make is I love to make the circular mark. I already have some of that. So what I may do on this one is take a uh, marker. This is a Sharpie and this is kind of like a bronze color. And I might make, since I have some circular, I might make some just lines with my bronze marker. I might go in and do some writing. Like I said, I always, I write the word. It's the same word I write in all my art. Um, some of you might be able to decipher what it is. Some, some you might not. Um, I wanted to grab my Woody. Um, I may, uh, I grabbed it, but then I put it down. I may do some smaller um, marks. Um, there's a little small, smaller. Um, I may, let me grab another one. I like to do writing, so you can't tell. Very unique to me. Um, something that I think a lot of people like. Um, the gel pen. Me. Yeah, it looks nice in the dark. Some of these you can't see on the camera, but when you're up close, you can. Um, I like the circular, so I may. So you can see these as like a, um, really a large painting and you are adding your final marks onto the painting.
Again, these are all marks that are going to be unique to you. Another mark that I like to make is um, just love circles. So let me grab, here's one. This has got a lot of um, letters in it. So I may want to, again, bring in my gel pen. Like a starburst, sort of like. And I'm keeping these just a very limited um, grouping of marks that I'm making. So that'll give you an idea of how I finish the larger paintings. This is just a very simple. Um, I when I did these, I I seen on several of my videos where I line up. A bunch of these square papers and they're kind of studies for me and I keep them and I like to go back and just look at them for the simple fact that sometimes a mark that I'll make without thinking about it becomes a new mark for me that I may not have done before That gives you an idea so that's what these larger studies that I did and you saw me go through them and then my final mark was to go in and add all these little markings that I love to do and the scribbles and the, the symbols that I use so I hope this has been helpful I, I try to put out videos that are on processes that I do as an artist to help you in your process. I, I want to get better equipment, but that just takes time and money. And my money is spent in my supplies right now. But at some point, I hope to put, um, I hope to put out um, better videos with better cameras and but I'll get to that point so I hope you've enjoyed this process and enjoyed seeing some of the the marks that I make and um, start incorporating your own marks in a journal of marks that you love and then start putting them into your artwork because you'll find that your your painting especially when you get to the end I, I I always say that there's that fine line before the uh, the fully created thoughts that I put on my paintings and the there's an ugly stage and then once you start making your marks on your paintings it takes it beyond the ugly stage and it takes it into your paintings of who you are as an artist and again my style of art may not be yours. I'm a very messy artist. But the point I want to make to you is make your art yours. You don't necessarily have to make your art like I do. In fact, you shouldn't because you need to make it yours. But some of the techniques I use, I hope that you'll be able to use in your um, own art practice yourself. So thank you for watching this video to the end, and I uh, really enjoy uh, comments that you leave. It helps my channel, and I would love to have thumbs up. Um, I understand that the more um, interaction that I have with my viewers helps put my um, art, my channel out there. The algorithm puts it out there more, so any interaction that 
questions that you may have for me or comments are, are so greatly appreciated. But thank you for watching.